this thing fought with me until the very end but there we have it another addition to my bulgarian air force in the jet age collection all right let's kick things off with the wheels first i painted them in dark green color and then i cut masks for the hubs after that i applied a few layers of tanya's rubber black and the mask can be removed now on the topic of masks, I decided to take advantage of the X2 M1 and make myself masks for the board numbers, instead of using decals. The blade cutting function of the machine did very well and turned a strip of 18mm Tamiya tape into a set of masks. After a quick spritz with MRP's insignia red, I carefully removed the masks at least here in front of the camera. On the other side I was not so careful and I took a piece of the number with the mask. Fortunately it was small enough so I was able to brush paint the missing piece. The tips of the external fuel tanks got the same insignia red after a little bit of careful masking. For the national insignia I used decals as it is too small and complex for my level of knowledge regarding the blade cutter. This tent you can see on the footage was provided by Hobbyzone and proved itself a very valuable addition to my toolbox. Now I can use both of my hands when I apply the decals or when I do the assembly of all the small bits and pieces hanging from the fuselage and the wings. The stand even has small tray where things such as cement, panel line washes and decal solutions fit snugly reducing the chance to tip them over and make a mess. I will put a link to this stand in the description so you can check it out but don't go anywhere until the end of this video. The decal sheet that comes with the kit does not provide any kind of service stencils. So I did some digging in the leftover decals box and found stencils from a MiG-15 kit I have built many moons ago. In my opinion, the stencils give so much life and authenticity to the model that it is worth spending the time to apply a few of them. Obviously, if you have to stencil a phantom, it may get a bit boring, but still, stencils remain a nice touch the way I see things. The National Insignia decals simply refused to work with me and treated the strong decal solution from Agama as if it was water. So, to make them look better, I used the riveter to reinstate the rivet lines and the scalpel blade to cut the decal along any underlying panel line. With all the decals in place, I applied what is now harder to find than unicorn tears. The almighty model master sealer for metallizers. While the varnish is curing, I am shaping the FOD covers. I cut and shaped the front ones by hand, but for the rear I used the laser cutter to get a perfect circle with the exact size I want. Also, I made handles for the FODs using aluminum sheet that can be found as a seal on some food packages. I glued the handles down and painted the FODs with insignia red. Another small detail I added on the covers were the board numbers I wrote down using a fine paintbrush. For a bit of weathering I did a simple sponge chipping with water-based acrylic paint. To glue the front ones in place I used PVA glue. Don't want to get too cocky here but those parts are probably the best fitting ones for the entire build. And now it is time to do some weathering on the airframe. Here I am going to keep things rather simple. Fortunately enough the airplanes of the Bulgarian Air Force never saw real action after the end of World War II. So ground crews had plenty of time and good conditions to keep the machines in top shape. This is also supported with period photographs including one or two of Bird 22. All is nice and shiny. That would be very boring though, so some weathering will find its way onto the model. I started with the grey panel line accent color from Tamiya. It is not as noticeable as black would be but still provides some contrast with the natural metal finish. Here I went for full surface coverage instead of pin wash for two reasons. 
One is to fill the rivets in more adequate time frame and two to kill some of the shine. The only thing I dislike about Tamiya's washes is that the tube holding the brush tip in the cap collects a lot of wash and if you touch that to the surface it unloads immediately which can create a problem. After the wash is dry I remove the excess with a paper towel slightly dampened in mineral spirits. Now let's step out of the weathering for a moment to make some barrels and pitot tubes. Medical needles will be the material of choice for this task. For the pitot tubes I use two sizes so one can fit inside the other. To give the paint any chance to stick to the metal I will apply a layer of the Mr. Metal primer using a brush. Then on the barrels I am applying flat black paint. And finally using a silicone brush I am rubbing some graphite powder in the flat black paint to get a color and sheen that better represents a barrel. One final masking effort and I applied flat varnish over the walkways and the green areas on the nose. While the varnish is drying I will do oil paint weathering on the underside of the model, starting with some streaking. I selected a few access panels and literally dragged a dot of Starship field behind it. This is very easy to do when the surface is gloss or somewhat glossy. Some more significant dirt accumulation I will apply after the panel line that divides the fuselage and the tail section. The whole structure from this panel line to the end of the tail gets removed if some more significant work needs to be done on the engine. For this reason I think it is a suitable area for some heavier weathering. Due to the shape of the fuselage all the dirt should be carried down to the belly, be it by rain or melting frost or something. So that is another area where it is plausible to have more dirt. Using a fan brush I am blending the oil paint so that it looks like rain marks. Very very faint effect and the camera cannot capture it but it is there. On the walkways and the nose I will do some paint distress with watercolor pencil of a lighter green shade. Also I will do some bare metal chipping with silver pencil but it will be very little. For some reason, despite the flat varnish, the pencils did not want to leave any significant impression on the surface. Perhaps flat varnishes can have smoother or coarser finishes. FYI, I used Tamiya Lacquer Flat diluted with Mr. Rapid Thinner. Along with basically drawing on the surface, the watercolor pencils can be used with a brush and some water. I will use that to recreate some fading on the nose. First with the green, then with some yellowish brown color. The blending is not as easy or nice as with oils, but it is a nice effect overall. Ok, the tape can be removed now and with that out of the way, our final assembly shall commence. First let's super glue the gear legs and the wheels together. This assembly shall be held in place in the wheel well with a little bit of cement in the location point and later with some CA glue in strategic and barely visible places. Then comes the strut which I replaced with medical needles out of necessity. But nothing can be that real metal sheen. Next come the gear bay doors. The order of assembly of these small parts is not derived by the instructions nor it is random. I choose it so I can install stuff with having as little in the way as possible thus reducing the chance of knocking something over. The external fuel tanks I misplaced because I did not do my due diligence. It is not that much of an issue but now the pilot will have to do without the flaps. The pre-drilled holes with the appropriate size made the installation of the pitot tube super easy. On a museum airplane with the same number, part of them is painted in green, so this is what I did here as well. The barrels also found their way into the picture without too much fuss. And with that our little mix 17 is complete. 
Thank you so much for following along this build for the last month and a half. It has been a unique experience and the result is satisfying. Once again, thank you for watching and until next time, happy modeling fellas!